So tonight we're back with the 2021 Porsche 911 Turbo S. I've been driving this around all week and I wanted to give you guys some final thoughts on what it's been like to live with and what it's been like to drive. This car is just an absolute monster. There's a lot of car here. There's a lot to take in, a lot of performance. It's a physical experience for you and your passengers and uh, an emotional one too. Look at this thing. I think this is the best looking 911 on sale today. This silver with the red interior too is a great spec. The Turbo S starts at $203,000. This one's spec'd up to about 226. Not cheap, but 911 turbos never have been. That gives you 640 horsepower, 590 pound-feet of torque. This has an eight-speed PDK gearbox, all-wheel drive. Has some specialized components too for the turbo. We have standard carbon ceramic brakes on all four corners, 21 inch wheels on the back, 20 inch wheels in the front. Let's hop inside, we'll show you what the interior looks like, start it up and uh, talk a little bit more about this car, take it for a drive. The exhausts open up there, between normal and sport. We have a slightly different interior design with this 992. I wasn't too sure about it in photos, but actually living with it, seeing it in person, in the flesh, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous 911. It's such a wonderful place to be. All the materials, all the switch gear, the buttons, everything has a beautiful, just nice tactility to it. Porsche's gone with a little bit more of a minimalist design on this interior, and I really like the way it looks. The materials, the fit, the finish, the touches, the carbon fiber, Everything in here from just the finishing, the leather, the stitching, it's all top notch, best in the business. And um, you get your drive mode selector right here. The ergonomics are really user friendly too. Super easy to use everything in this car. A lot of your sunroof controls are right here. Heated, cooled seats, your parking brake. We've got a cup holder right here for the driver and one right there for the passenger. Placed a little bit better than they used to be back in the day. This has a bunch of options. We'll list all that in the description. Uh, we have the Porsche dynamic chassis control, the exhaust. We have a nose lift in this, which is proven to be nice and useful on a daily basis this week. I love this center gauge cluster. It just looks super sharp. The digital gauges actually look pretty nice too. You can control and see a bunch of different options on the right menu. And uh, on the left, you can control your volume and track selection as well as your voice activation. You get your cruise control stock down here, your drive mode selector. You press this button in, you get sport response for 20 seconds, uh, which is pretty cool. P basically puts the transmission and engine and everything into the most aggressive drive mode, and you get that for about as long as it takes for an on-ramp, which is kind of cool. You do get full boost all the time in this Turbo S. There's no overboost like there was in the last generation. So that is nice. You can utilize that 590 pound-feet of torque constantly. It's a very spacious frunk. Quite a bit of room in there. Making this a very practical supercar. I just love the way the front end on this looks. These headlights look super exotic, super special. Center lock wheels, massive 420 millimeter carbon ceramic brakes up front. This LED light bar in the back looks super sharp too. We have active aerodynamics too with a rear spoiler and some flaps in the front. All right, what do you think? Take this thing for a drive. There's even a little bit of room in the back seats. You can fold those down for a flat parcel shelf, getting quite a bit of space back there. She has a reverse camera rotating lines, nice wide angle, high res. You've got your light controls over here. The infotainment takes a little bit to familiarize yourself with, but once you do, it all seems pretty intuitive. You've got a main screen here and then all of these different side screens that you can quickly access. You can turn on and off your stop start, your sport exhaust, raise and lower your spoilers. You've got your climate control right there, Apple CarPlay, 
It's also wireless. No Android Auto in Porsches right now. Lots of different settings, a lot of customizability in this Porsche, which is great. The only thing I'm not too crazy about in this interior is the puny little gear selector, but that's okay. It's out of the way and it kind of adds to the minimalist look of this interior. I think you either love this or you hate it. The GT3 has a little bit of a different setup um, and I think this shares the same selector similar to what the Carrera has. All right, off we go. We'll start off in sport mode. You get a little bit more exhaust action in sport mode, some more pops and burbles. <laughs> it's pretty incredible how this car just bleeds off speed like it doesn't even matter. You'll be doing speeds in this thing and you don't even realize you're going half that. The ride quality is surprisingly comfortable for what it is. And this chassis, the handling. This car is so well sorted, so well tuned and dialed in. Before we get started with today's drive, I would like to thank our sponsor for this video, Phantom Wallet. This is my daily wallet. It's a well-engineered product that I really have enjoyed using the last year or so. This is the Phantom R, it's their higher-end model. You can bolt on a number of different attachments to the back. This is the key holder attachment, and uh, I really like this because it kind of combines everything that I need out of my wallet. I can hold my keys, I can have a money clip on the other side that I bolt on, hold some cash, and I can fan out all my cards like this. There are a number of different finishes, color choices, card capacities, pretty much customizable to anything that you need. Check them out at phantomwallet.com and use the code TOFER for 10% off your order. The handling and vehicle dynamics are telepathic. No understeer, beautiful rotation around corners. Effortless grip. <laughs> the magic to this turbo, too, the performance is amazing. I can barely show you what it's capable of on the street, but on a daily basis, that's where this car really shines. It has such poise and such grace with the way it rides down the road. It's incredibly easy to live with and drive on a daily basis. Aside from the fact that you're driving a almost quarter million dollar 911 Turbo, um, it doesn't attract as much attention as I thought it would. And it's very quiet and comfortable and luxurious in here. <laughs> the relationship between using the paddles and the car switching back into automatic mode and sport is pretty well tuned. Sport Plus, the PDK gearbox tuning is a little bit conservative. I would like it to be a bit more aggressive sometimes, but you can always go into full manual mode if you really want to have control over your 911 Turbo. Put into Sport Plus, the spoiler extends, the front end lowers a little bit. That rear spoiler will tilt up under hard braking, giving us a little bit more downforce. <laughs> as soon as you're in Sport Plus, things get pretty serious. Pops and burbles go away. This car is so well sorted. 
I remember when 911 turbos used to understeer a little bit around corners. You had to really manage that front end grip. That's no longer the case here. Forget what you're in. You can set cruise control. This does have the option for adaptive cruise control and some safety systems. This car I don't think is equipped with it though. We just got standard old fashioned cruise control, which is just fine by me. Lets you focus on the driving experience. Just an incredible machine. <laughs> I think if you're gonna buy a car for wow factor alone and to just terrify passengers, this has got to be at the top of your list. There isn't a whole lot that I've driven that has the grip, the poise, the driving enjoyment, the emotional factor too. This is a fun car to drive all the time. And sometimes it's not always the case with really ultra fast cars. Driving this 911 Turbo this week has definitely made me a convert. Carbon ceramics feel amazing. Really nice pedal feel, excellent bite. They're progressive too. <laughs> just unbelievable performance. There isn't really a whole lot else to say about this. It's just, it's almost perfect. Sport response gets pretty wild. <laughs> It's always interesting for me to get back into a Porsche after driving a bunch of other performance cars for a while. There's something about the way they design interiors and all of your interfaces that is just right. This car, I feel like I wear it like a glove. It just feels like I can control everything perfectly and it was made for my brain as a, as a driver, as a car enthusiast. Everything falls to hand beautifully the responsiveness of the car, the way it handles, the way the chassis just reacts to all of my inputs. It's really a beautiful thing to experience and drive because it's so fluid and so natural feeling. And even though it has all of this performance, it's very approachable performance. You can enjoy it still on the street, granted at the risk of your license, but it's Still, you can have those little quick spurts. You can press that sport response mode and have a little bit of fun on an entrance ramp or on a highway or on a little back road. Granted, you can't really explore the limits of this car anywhere except for the racetrack, but it can do that too. <laughs> Each drive mode seems to be pretty well tuned. Sport has kind of the most personality to it with the pops and burbles. 
Hard on the gas, head back. <laughs> How much faster does it get? Just incredible. Turn around on this golf course, seems like an appropriate place. position of a 911. Steering wheel is just right up to your chest. You're set back perfectly in the seat, but you still have good visibility around you. this engine like an instrument. I love all the noises that it makes. It's diverse. There's some depth to the sound here. It's not just a, a vacuum cleaner. Despite this being a twin turbo flat six, it makes a good noise. It doesn't wail away like the old naturally aspirated Carreras used to, but the turbo's always had a little bit of a different exhaust note to it. I gotta say, I do really like the way this car sounds. <laughs> I don't care what you're driving, whether it's an electric car, a Tesla, a McLaren, the way this car builds boost and the drama behind it, the sound behind it, the feel of those turbos kicking in, it's really a special feeling and a special experience. It's pretty intoxicating. Let's hit sport response mode for a sec, see what happens. Explanatory. I think you guys get the picture. Just amazing. Just about perfect in my opinion. I, I really have enjoyed my time in this car this week. The more I've driven it, the more it's let me in on its secrets, its personality, its little subtleties. It's nice to see a 911 turbo with character. And the capability of this thing is so high, but it still remains exciting. It's not boring. I don't think a car like this would would dull on you over time.
just so good all of the time is on Pirelli P0 run flats. And I usually don't like run flats that much. These, these however, feel fantastic. They're sticky, they don't make a lot of noise. Perfectly tuned for what this car is capable of for a street tire. If you were taking this to the track, I'd probably get something a little bit more aggressive. things up there thanks for watching if you want to see more on this 911 turbo check out the pov day and night drives on the winery road magazine youtube channel that'll be it for this one thanks for watching we'll see you later